Romeo Moon Online, as uh, you may know him. Uh, we are starting up a new project called Lounge Elites, where we will be going to various hangouts at uh, different types of game or different games here um, that we usually frequent. Um, and I am here today with Matt Quinchill from Mad Matt Reviews. Hi. And, yeah, and Randy McCulloch on his Namiru character, also known as Ransan online. Hello. All right. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Um, how are we all doing today? I'm cool. Reached 12 <laughs> levels in one day. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. That's quite a lot to take in. Um, I don't know. I spent the day twinking. <laughs> as, oh. as everybody in AO does, like, the five of twinking that I remember we went through. Five-minute twink turns into two hours of work. Yeah. Oh, wow. This should take probably about five minutes. Two hours later. I still need something. I don't know what. Let's try the rings. Well, yeah, I was trying to put my level 60 uh, keeper, uh, keep to faith, into a new sword. And it became a horrible matter of trying to balance out keeping his armor from being over-equipped or keeping the sword from being over-equipped. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. I finally got that balance, but it took about three hours. By which point, the person that was going to join me on a city raid decided to take a nap. <laughs> and I haven't heard from him since. <laughs> uh, Ed, I would assume. Oh, yes, that was Ed. Yeah, he oh, was on Don't not, Do Not Disturb okay. earlier, too. Okay. Oh, I forgot to also introduce Bob Marley. Hello, Bob Marley. How are you? Yes. Um, and we should also state that currently we are sitting in the Grind Bar on Sunrise Station on Anarchy Online's RK1, a.k.a. Atlantean server. Mm-hmm. What he person. said. Going to the first person looking at the huge bar. And back out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Alright, well, gentlemen, uh, we are here to... Um talk about uh, our, our first experiences, I guess, with um, with MMOs, and also we um, have some interesting news from the world of Anarchy Online. Um, I think maybe we should go with why we first started to play MMOs to begin with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and begin with uh, Matt, if, if that's okay with you, Matt. Okay. I'm actually trying to remember what my first MMO was, actually. Mm-hmm. That was many, many moons ago. Gosh. I, I think it was one of the Korean... Actually, no. No, actually, I do remember now. My Sadly, my first MMO was World of Warcraft. Uh, oh, wow. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I joined in, and it was actually social back then. It was back in its... Uh, actually, no. No, 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 no. Actually, now I remember even further back. No, it was not World of Warcraft. It was Final Fantasy. Uh, Final Fantasy Eleven. Yes. Oh, that that's the one that our friend that our friend Ed, Edward was going to help you level up in, wasn't it? Edward. Uh, Ed. I don't, Ed boy. Sh- sure. I don't know if he has a game on uh, that anymore. Okay, I remember him saying that he was going to try to help you level up here. So. But I but I don't have an account with that anymore. It's been so many moons ago. But, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, I actually enjoyed uh, playing Eleven while I was playing it. First of all, it was a lot like the other RPGs I'd seen before, but it a lot. But uh, in particular, in Eleven, it allowed you to do whatever class you wanted to do, but you could switch out at any time as long as you could get back to your house. Hmm. Which is what I found really cool about that, because you know, there was so much extra customization you can do with just one character. And you can keep cranking out the interesting ideas and mix and match uh, stats later on, apparently. Like, mix your fighter with your white mage so you have a fighter that can heal. Now, was that really as, um, was that as difficult an MMO to play as what, uh, for example, John Burkhart, um, KSD1 on um, MMO Grinder said that that was one of the most difficult games that he's ever had to play? Um, I will say that as time has gone on, the people there have become... Uh, hard to team with, if you will. Like, you just barely get a team together and all of a sudden a whole bunch of them need to go off and do other things. 
Um, also, I will say that there is a certain point in the game, I think when you reach about level 20, that the monsters do get severely difficult and you really do need a team to, get, to progress further. Okay. Into other wow. things. But, but you, once you hit like, I want to say, a couple more levels, and things start to get easier again. But uh, that was about as far as I actually got in that game. Uh, I played that, I must say, for a good solid year or more. Wow. And, and then I stopped, and then I played WoW, then I stopped, then I started playing all the free games, and then I got caught in City of Heroes. Okay. Alright, you, um, Kansan, what, is, what was your first MMO, and why did you start playing MMOs to begin with? Okay, that's an interesting question, because it depends on what you define as an MMO. Okay. Um, because my online experience goes back to the uh, early 90s on uh, early bulletin board play-by-post things, which is technically an online RPG, a, a, a massive online RPG, considering we had about 100 members, but... If you're talking about the MMO in the modern sense, this is my first MMO, Anarchy Online. I started playing it in 2002 because at the time I was working uh, third shift um, with a bunch of people doing tech support and they were constantly talking about this game that I had never heard of called Anarchy Online. At the time I had swore to myself I would never get involved in an MMO. <laughs> um, however, um, our, the rules that we had for Third Shift were fairly loose, so we could actually install the game and play it at work. Mind you, this was the kind of tech support where you got maybe four calls a night. Okay. Add that to another fact that you were doing, that you had one guy doing email, one guy taking calls, and one guy helping with the uh, lab, there were three of us, and we'd get maybe two, three uh, students in there a night doing their homework. It was college. Hmm. So we wound up with a lot of free time on our hands. So they'd be talking about the, the, the leveling, the grinding, leaps gear. I'm like, what? what's all this about? <laughs> so one day I start looking over my coworker's shoulder at this game and I'm like, okay, this looks pretty awesome. This is nice. Because I'd seen pictures before of games like uh, Ultima Online in the early days of EverQuest, because this was 2002, those were the contemporaries at the time, and they didn't look that cool. They looked like you know, a little icon that moved around, but this was one of the first um, 3D environments. And I saw that, and within, I'd say, about a week, I had installed it and was playing the first 15 day, uh, first, the 15 day demo they had at the time. And I renewed after that. And Anarchy Online basically became my life for the next nine months. I, uh, basically, I would wake up, I would play for a couple hours, get ready to go to work, go to work, do what I needed to at the beginning of my shift, start up the game, play the game, pausing only when I had to take a call, go home at night, stop someplace and pick up breakfast, play the game, go to bed. So it was my life for about nine months, to the point that my friends had to hold an intervention for me at one point. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, my friend Bob decided to haul me off to an anime convention, um, ASEN, uh, as a way of getting me off the game. <laughs> wow. And by the way, the character I'm on now, Namiro, this is my first character. Was okay. both February 2002. Wow, you've not re-rolled him or anything? Nope. He's in what level is he? He's um, out of 220, he's currently two th 209. Okay. And 30 of 30 ally levels. I've been known to take large breaks on him. I, I tend to suffer a little thing that we like to call alt-itis. Oh, yeah. Which is the ability to roll down. Plus the fact that around 2006, 2007... Um, I got dragged into City of Heroes by our friend Ed. Mm-hmm. And, um, 
over the last year I've been playing a lot of MMOs because I finally got a machine that can actually handle it. But this is always home. Going to AO is like coming home to me. It is my first MMO and it is still, I think, probably one of my favorites. All right, over to you. Yeah. Yep, well, uh, let's see here. Um, my first MMO was City of Heroes, um, and Ed well, Ed and Bob were both uh, the people who kind of dragged me off into there. Um, I was a little bit nervous. Uh, I didn't have a computer, I didn't have a laptop that really was able to play the game all that well, but I still went ahead and installed it. Um, I picked up the um, Good vs. Evil edition from Best Buy for about $20. Figured it was, you know, a fairly cheap game that I might as well give it a try. Um, it just barely ran on the old. It was a compact Presario laptop with uh, about 512 gig, um, 512 megs of RAM. And, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh. and it was like an 80 gig hard drive that filled up incredible, no. entirely too fast. Aaron, you said it's a compact. That's all I need to know. <laughs> yeah. I was just happy. It was it was a um oh what do you call it? a refurbished compact. Oh. That's even worse. Yeah. It was on sale though. Hey, Ron. It was the first. But Ron, remember e-machine. Okay, it's not an e-machine. I will give you that. <laughs> yeah. That's my first it's like desktop. So one oh, step boy. above an e-machine, if that. <laughs> Yeah, my, my, my first, uh, my very first laptop It's not an the... Edsel, it's a Pinto. And it's a used Pinto. <laughs> Don't hit it in the back. <laughs> it might fall apart. Oh, God. Um, yeah, but my, my first, my first laptop was, um, it was six, it was six gigs of RAM, or, um, no, six, I keep saying six that. Gigs six gigs of RAM gigs would be hard to say. Yeah, it was six gig hard drive. I think what was it two hundred and fifteen megabytes? It was this cheap thing that my parents had bought um, had bought me to use for school and only school. They did not want me goofing around on it. Obviously. So yeah, everyone was off playing these awesome little video games, and I was stuck at best typing up stuff that would probably be a rainy next day because the machine was just that bad. Um, I don't remember the make of that one though. It was hmm. if I dig it, if if I can dig it up, I'll, I'll try to. But yeah, that's why I was so excited because even though this was a compact, this la this new laptop was, I was so excited because I could actually do stuff on it. I could watch streaming video. It w wasn't the best. It wasn't the fastest, but I could I could do I could do it. Um, I could install Adobe Photoshop on there. I could use my... When I bought a tablet, I wound up using my tablet, my Wacom Into OS 3 tablet for it. And so this whole new world was opened up to me um, through this uh, new technology that I had paid for myself. And on top of that, I was able to play this video game that um, this whole new 3D world um, that was there for me to explore. And I was not very much into video games. I did not like the new, the, um, when 3D was first coming out, um, I think it was, what, the N64 or whatnot, the, the, the graphics I was not very impressed with. But as it kind of went on, um, when I saw City of Heroes, when I saw Bob and Ed playing that in, at the University of Wisconsin Anime Club, I saw them sitting there playing it on a laptop, and I thought it looked halfway decent. I was like, wow, that actually looks fairly exciting. I remember seeing Bob's character was on its own, surrounded in a bank by um, a mob with uh, orange names. And Bob, Bob was on a, a build that was not you know, meant to take on that high-level enemies. And so it was actually pretty gripping to see him try to fuck through these creatures. Uh, I guess they were thugs or whatever, your typical thugs for that game. But yeah, it, it, it appealed to me through that. Um, and then also the, the character generator, which was uh, it was excellent. Um, I wound up making several characters whose all of their backstories were all tied together. And it just, it was so, it's so appealing and it's still appealing to me. And just the fact that I could like run around this 3D city and explore all these different buildings. I couldn't go inside them, which was disappointing, but 
you know. Hey, you can hop off them, though. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one of the things I really like about MMOs is the fact that you have this immersive world. Mm -hmm. It's just really nice. And, you know, some are better than others. Um, City of Heroes was pretty much confined to one city. Mm -hmm. Two cities, if you included the Rogue Isles. And you really only had chunks of cities that were the zones. Anarchy Online, you have a world. But you only have, you know, the part of the world that's been terraformed. It's, you know, the future. Mm -hmm. And then you have games like Lotro and um, WoW and EverQuest, where you're basically exploring a continent. And you'll have to excuse my clock going off. <laughs> Actually, I just <laughs> faintly heard that. Like, wait a minute. That thing comes from my window. Where did that come from? Yeah, I couldn't quite hear it all that well, but... Hmm. Yeah, it was... I, I just really enjoyed exploration aspect. Um, I have been playing Guild Wars 2. Um, I think the fact that they expect you, you to... <laughs> I will I not touch that game, but that's a rant for a different cast. Yeah, that's that's a rant. Uh, perhaps next week we can next week or the next time we do this we can hit on that whole okay can of worms. Um, but yeah, the the fact that they actually expect you to explore has actually made me not want to explore mm. for some odd reason. It's just like, well, it's built into the game now. You can finally explore areas and, and be rewarded with XP, which was actually done in City of Heroes with their exploration badges. You know? Yeah. You the time to find had them. anything like that. I still explored anyway. Mind you, mm -hmm. I told you I installed this thing on the machines at work. Machines at work were never meant to run an MMO. <laughs> <laughs> They had the little default Intel graphics cards that they use on all the business machines that actually have like, no renderware. Mm-hmm. My, my sister and my brother-in-law had one of those machines, yeah. I discovered once I got above level 20 in the game... By the way, AO is a little different from most games that you actually have 220 levels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got 12 levels today. That's just scratching the surface. Yeah. Once you got to about level 20 you tried to fight anything, you started to suffer horrendous lag. So I really couldn't fight. So I would wind up wandering around, just going to explore. Oh look, there's a monster. It's blood red to me. It's a hundred levels above me. I'm not going near that. I'm going to go this way. Mm -hmm. It became fun to see how far I could get before something would finally wind up killing me. <laughs> I, I I kind of like exploring the Shadowlands. Um, first running with a pocket boss was, gosh, what are those tig? It was a gigantic tig, or well, are they Martigs or something like that? It was. Was it Ranrother? I believe so. Something that like that. It was. It was coming up the land bridge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not really even a pocket boss. It's basically just there to know that, yes, this place is dangerous and it can kill you. Mm -hmm. Be afraid. Be afraid. Because I've killed that thing. It doesn't drop anything. <laughs> Pain the neck. I'm just like, oh, jeez, thank you, Funcom. Thank you for just putting a freaking 100 boss in a level 30 zone. Mm-hmm. This, this was actually in, in Nascence, I believe. Yeah, Nascence on the west side. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that, that's Mind you, when I started, there was no Shadowlands. Mm -hmm. There was no Alien Invasion expansion. There was none of this stuff. There wasn't even 220 levels back then. There was just 200. <laughs> I got to about level 73 in the nine months I originally played. And then I stopped playing because I didn't have internet until about 2005. <laughs> hmm. I went for three years with no internet, or very limited internet. And then one day, I just remember sitting back and watching an episode of, uh, oh God, what is that? Um, 
I just asked you guys this a couple weeks ago. That anime series about online gaming, Hack, not Hack. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Was it was uh, one of the one of the uh, spin-offs that was dealing largely with a guild, and I'm like, I wonder how my old organ AO is doing. Um, that would be. Oh, I know which one you're talking about. I actually have the manga for it. I can't think of it right now. It's Da Hack Hmm. It's not Die Hack Twilight, is it? What's that? Like, I think it's like Twilight. or something like that. Okay. I don't so know. Any... It's, it's been a long time. I really did... I'm not one that actually have watched all of Dot Hack. I know I probably should. People tell me I should. Ed is more the person that would watch a lot of Dot Hack. I know that. Yeah. I could probably ask to borrow it at some point. Um, <laughs> but... No, it was just the fact that I came back and I actually managed to log in on the day that my uh, my org was having its anniversary party. My org is one of the oldest, in fact, it is probably the oldest neutral org in AO history. Notice our org names underneath yeah, our character names. Um, there is some, uh, mem- there is some uh, uh, level of... Uh, argument on whether ours or the org elite operations came first hmm. uh, I think we win by about three hours <laughs> okay um, but IR uh, is one of those that is old enough that we actually do have uh, social clothing named after our org really? oh wow it's a horribly ugly robe but it exists <laughs> <laughs> graphics update graphics update no it's just ugly Okay. I'd have, to, I'd have to go to the bank and look to see if I have one. I probably do. <laughs> I, I think it's general purpose for me for all my tunes to have it, just because it is the. Uh... Just because it's the ore grub. Yeah. Yeah. Nice souvenir. Bob Marley keeps talking to us. Yeah, yes. I apparently do not have one on this tune, and I'm actually rather um, upset at myself. I stashed it on somebody else. Yeah, actually, um, one of my other tunes has like two of them. Ah. So it might have gotten transferred by accident. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's also kind of worth mentioning that we, the people, the three of us here have at least one one account that was or is still active as as pay to play and then we also have at least one Frub account and I think Randy in some cases you might have multiple accounts or uh, yeah I have about four. Oh wow oh. Jesus but mind you I only really use two of them. Okay. The other two I use for uh, chat bots. Okay. Um I used to have my own org um called the Newland Syndicate that I had, it was based, it was a criminal organization, um, kind of, you know, kind of mafia style, so the name of our bot was MobBot, and it was, it was basically, it was to, you know, register who logged in, who logged out, etc., but that org didn't last very long, so Mob got, MobBot kind of got put by the side, and then I was, uh, Hosting a replacement bot for IR for a while before we got one of uh, before uh, one of our uh, other members had a new better functional bot. Okay. Because I was only able to be on, um, you know, 10, 12 hours a day at the time. I couldn't run it 24/7. So he got independent hosting and hosted his bot, and that's been the IR bot ever since. Okay, well, we're, we've been on the topic of Anarchy Online. Um, have, Randy, have you heard about the news about Lindy Lou and Kintai leaving? I've heard about Kintai. I hadn't heard about Lindy Lou. It really mm-hmm. disappoints me. Um, for those of you familiar with the MMO world, Funcom is the, man, the, the company that uh, developed Anarchy Online and still maintains it. It also has two other games. 
in the MMO world, Age of Conan, and it just launched The Secret World. Um, so far, The Secret World has been um, a bit of a success for them, so I was hoping they could take that and start putting some of that money into rebuilding their older titles. Um, Anarchy Online is 11 years old now, 11 and a half almost. And they've been wanting to build a new engine since about 2006, 2007. Um, originally, there was going to be an Anarchy Online 2. Uh, that project got scrapped, and the engine for it got used for Age of Conan. That engine got refined further and is now the engine for the Secret World as well. What um, the Anarchy Online developers want to do is take that engine, that newer, shinier version of this engine, and upgrade Anarchy Online to it so you have better graphics, um, easier game time, etc. The problem is that takes a little bit of development time and money. And Funcom has basically put Anarchy Online on life support. It keeps enough to maintain the servers and yeah, still add the, uh, every now and then add a little bit more content, but not enough to do anything massive like a, a graphical overhaul. They're still trying it, but they've been, you know, promising us this new engine since 2006. I'm fairly certain one of the uh, previous uh, lead game developers was let go recently due to the fact that um, he had made comments uh, a few years back uh, when someone asked when the new game engine was coming out. He said, we're sure we're going to get it out before Duke Nukem Forever. <laughs> and of course, uh, earlier this year, Duke Nukem Forever came out and bombed. And then I, about a month or two later, he said his goodbyes. Yeah, that was uh, uh, Means, right? Yes. Okay. And then he got... Um, and now, uh, when they were thinking they were going to be able to get new people once the Secret World was in development, and instead, uh, Funcom has tightened all the purse strings. And they had to let Kintai go, and now I guess they've had to let Lindalu go. Oh, Lindy Lou, she chose to leave before they could, you know, lay her off. Um, so that she didn't want anybody else to get the axe. Uh, according okay. to her farewell post, she didn't want anyone else to get the axe. So she decided to uh, move on instead of jeopardize the, the balance of the team. Uh, or whatever team is left. Um, yeah. yeah. And I heard that Funcom had quite a few layoffs. I, I can't quite remember the number of layoffs, but... Across and I think Kintai was one of those. Yes, he was. Mm -hmm. I did actually um, read up on that. He was laid off because of because of these cutbacks, which is, like I said, mildly annoying to me. Mm -hmm. Because I really had thought better on on Funcom. Yeah. Do you think it's um, now? Some people are saying the Secret World actually isn't doing as well as they thought. They were hoping to get. Oh gosh, they were they were hoping to get like five hundred thousand subscribers, and they didn't quite get that much. Well, all I remember is that they filled servers. Mm -hmm. Um, there were at least two servers that you could not make a character on because they were full. Yeah, our yeah, one of them. Dimensions. Um, Secret World uses a new uh, technology that's it's all on one big super server but there's different dimensions or shards that you can still become part of. And um, I remember uh, there was one that was listed as an RP server, and that got filled within the first 24 hours, I think, after the game launched. Figures. They had to then, within the first week, uh, set up a new, uh, a new dimension uh, a new RP dimension. That one's Leviathan, I think. So, I don't know if they lost people after uh, they uh, killed the uh, the beta membership or what happened, but I thought it was doing fairly well. And yeah, I, it, I do play The Secret World. I find it to be fairly awesome. Yes, I, I endorse it, too. I find it very immersive, actually. I uh, unlike a lot of games. 
I can't, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. I'm the free. I I have to go with the free games that I can yeah. throw five bucks into every once in a while. They do have free weekends. But it's that's only just a weekend. weekend. <laughs> Totally and some people are saying that it's kind of a, a niche title. I don't, or a niche title. It's, it's. I don't know. I don't. I don't think it's. Um, I wouldn't think that'd be that. I really niche. don't think it's. It's. It's that bad. It's actually. I was actually very happy with my experience playing the Secret World. So, it, it might just be that that's not what people want. It, it seems like there's a lot of people jumping at new titles, jumping at new well, games coming out because they're just so. They're, they're former WoW players who are they're bored with WoW and they're they're looking for the next big thing. Yeah, the thing is, you really don't need to look for the next big thing. You have to find what you like to play. I have always been a big sci-fi geek. I've been so for years. I love Star Trek. I like Star Wars. I love Doctor Who. So when Anarchy Online came out, it was the uh, first science fiction MMO. I think that's the only reason it hooked me. Um, since then, of course, I, I, I have my share of, you know, fantasy and modern day MMOs. The Secret World is the latter of which. It's a modern day kind of horror, Left for Dead, Silent Hill-esque. Mm -hmm. I, think I've, I think I've called it kind of Silent Hill meets Grand Theft Auto without any cars. Because it has uh, great cutscenes and great voice acting yeah, for those yeah. cutscenes. Yeah, I believe there's a mention of there's... a lot of. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was gonna say I, I believe there's a lot been a lot of mention of like Star Trek uh, voice actors. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's Tim Russ who played Tuvok from Voyager in there. Armin Shimmerman who played Quark from DS9. And Jeffrey Combs, who played uh, Wei Yun from DS9, as well as a couple of other he, a couple of other aliens in Star Trek. I think he played one of the first Cardassians we ever saw. But yeah, they're all three of those are in there at different points in the game. I haven't even seen the uh, voice actors yet for uh, the the last area. Currently, they're going to be adding more areas to it. Yeah, they, apparently an update just came out for it. Yeah, it, I'm wondering if Funcom also had one of those uh, quarterly reports that had them lose a lot of money and are therefore kind of panicking and tightening the belt. Uh, like I said, These I thought... Not pulling the plug on anything, sorry. Yeah. Next <laughs> week. <laughs> there is... Um... I think it is that a lot of companies, a lot of MMO companies are like, it's it's now the time to try to evolve beyond beyond World of Warcraft, beyond EverQuest, beyond Ultima Online to try to move, try to push everything a little bit further. And yep. they're throwing a lot of money at stuff for development and it's not always paying off. Uh, sometimes innovation doesn't pay off right away. Well, you mentioned those games. Um... EverQuest and Ultima Online are pretty much what they were first generation MMOs. They were they, they came out in the early days of MMOs. Anarchy Online I think was one of the first of the second generation MMOs. And I think World of Warcraft um, was in the middle of the second generation, possibly the beginning of the third generation depending on how you look at it mm -hmm. of MMOs. And now we're looking at the fourth or fifth generation. A lot of MMOs have been gravitating towards things like Facebook games. Oh, yeah. Things that you have to install a client and play. I'm not exactly fond of this. Yeah. I like to have the game on there. I don't like to have to go to social networking to play my games. I yeah, like that's not exactly my, my desktop story. that says Anarchy Online or City of Heroes or Secret World or whatever I'm playing at this particular day. I've been having MMO Tourette's all week, so I've been all over the place. <laughs> well, and it, see, it really limits the game, too. I mean, you browser-based games are getting better, but they're not necessarily Still, that yeah. much better. The problem is they're cheaper to put out, and they can um, imp their store a lot more. Which does not interest me at all, so... Yeah, well, you know, that's how they make money on those games. 
Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's how they so make so money off of little children who don't realize what they're playing is actually rubbish and just wasting their time. Mm -hmm. You have to remember the bottom line of these games is to make a profit for these companies. Whether it's uh, Funcom or NCSoft or Blizzard or uh, uh, Cryptic or Perfect World, actually that's the same company, etc. They're all out there to make money. And originally, back in the first and second generation days, the way you made money was to charge players $15 a month to play the game. And now, with the uh, migration towards the free-to-play gaming, um, they're not getting those $15 a month from a good three-quarters of their players. Instead, they have to make their money by selling cool things in the store. And not everybody's got the hang of it. I know Anarchy Online hasn't quite figured it out yet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, City of Heroes was doing a fairly good job of bringing out shinies on their store, just not on an every week basis. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, Perfect World, I think, has it to an art form. Practically, otherwise they wouldn't be doing as good as they are right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't figure out how a free-to-play MMO company could have gotten enough money to buy Cryptic otherwise. Oh, yeah. Mm. So, um, okay, going back on to the departure of the game director. Now, there's been several game directors for Anarchy Online. Yes. Um, the original ma main game director back in the early days, when it was originally just under development... <clears throat> Excuse me. And the first, uh, first few months of launch was Ragnar Tornquest. This is the same guy that's the head game developer for the Secret World. Um, he is a bit of an outside the box thinker when it comes to MMOs. He um, originally envisioned Anarchy Online as having a four-year lifespan. That there was going to be a constantly evolving story those four years. And then when they got to the end of it, they were either going to turn it off and move to AO2 or cross that bridge when they got to it. Eventually, Funcom decided this wasn't the greatest idea, that they wanted Anarchy Online to be an ongoing game. And they um, transferred Ragnar to another, to a, another uh, title and put someone else in charge. I do not remember who I was not playing at that time anymore. I think maybe it was Sin Sindiru or something, Cinder or something. I, he, either that or that was the third one. Cinderella, something not Cinderella. Like anyway, there was, um, when I restarted again, there was Bean's immediate predecessor um, was the person in charge. And he left within, I'd say, a few months. And Means took over, I think, in 2008. And he ran the game up until the beginning of this year. Okay. Um, now, <clears throat> um, what were the contributions that these directors made? Or what did, what did you think as a player uh, of these contributions, I should say? Um, I know one of the, I don't know if we, it's a complaint or what, but um, I don't know if I... I call it a complaint, but someone said that Means was kind of responsible more for indie game content and was not really focused that much on um, fixing the stuff that needed fixing in the game. Well, it wasn't so much the stuff that ne needed fixing. It was the fact that, really, Means started as a player. Mm -hmm. And he got his account to 220s, etc., by the end of it. And before he became a game developer, so when he was started, he was thinking of all the times he was had his 220s and there was nothing to do. So he began adding all these two, all these 200 or 210 plus raids in the game. Except for the fact that there was also, around the same time, there was a lot of problems. First of all, there was um, AO's Newbie Island, which, while not as bad as just being chucked into the original backyards when you started um, needed to be a little more organized mm -hmm. 
and have a little more progression as to what you're supposed to be doing and you should have come out of there with a little more understanding on the game. I know there's no, there's almost no mention of twinking. Yeah. New... Yeah. Players coming off have no idea even about implants, which is a big part of AO. Mm -hmm. Is putting an implant so that you know that you can get your skills better than what's this, so you can wind up using gear and nanos, that's the AO equivalent of spells, a good 20, 30 quality levels above your current level. Um, AO is, was built with the concept of, you know, any, anybody else they can create twinks and they're actually breaking the game and things like EverQuest, etc. AO was built for it. The problem is the players were too good and twinked beyond the concept of twinking. Uh, I believe at one point they talked about uh, back in the early days when uh, gear only went up to quality level 200, the same as your endgame level. I think there was a level four or a level six agent who got into a quality level 200 assault, uh, quality level 200 sniper rifle. Oh, wow! <laughs> By using a series of stepping implants and buffs he could get from other players, he was able to put in the sniper rifle and. Um, at that kill point, everything. Hey, okay, yeah, that's sick. <laughs> so they started adding level locks. Um, uh, this was, I think, around May to June of 2002. So the game had been running for about a year at the time. And they were oh, wow. uh, Dino bosses to Rubicon, which were dropping whole new nanos and loot, which were supposed to help rebalance the professions. And um, so they made all of these nanos level locked. And of course, the players moaned and complained and then got on with it. Um, so at how the same do we get around this? <laughs> was when we also began hearing about the Shadowlands. Shadowlands was the first major expansion for AO. There was a minor expansion called the Notum Wars that came out, I believe, in September or October of 2002, and then the Shadowlands came out in 2003. Shadowlands was originally being developed as a completely separate game from AO. And uh, when they picked up the license for Age of Conan, that game got sidelined and scrapped, and basically the AO developers basically said, can we have that stuff? Yeah, bring that stuff over here, please. And they built this metaphysical plane called the Shadowlands, and that became the first expansion for AO. And the Shadowlands broke the game a little. Um, you can't really earn money in the Shadowlands, except for you know loot drops and stuff that you can sell to other players. But uh, there were some stuff that dropped off of some of the mobs that you could sell in shops for a bunch of money. Um, oh, yeah. But also, there's a monster in various uh, areas of the Shadowlands called Hecklers, mm -hmm. which give a bunch of XP. So, uh, ever since the Shadowlands came out, uh, we have what we refer to as Heck Noobs. And that's players that have basically signed up for Heckler teams and have advanced from 1 to near 200 or 220 um, and have never really played their profession. And I've actually seen this happen in City of Heroes as well. People that have signed up to for um, uh, Mission Architect farm teams mm -hmm. and have gone from 1 to 50 and never played their archetype. And it's generally a bad thing not to learn your character as it evolves. Ah, oh, lost my chair. <laughs> oh no! Randy is cheerless. Yeah, he is also very shiny. Feet. Oh yeah, I, I have a very nice buff going on. Um, that um, is actually from uh, a PvP area. Well, it's actually the result of a PvP called the Gauntlet. Okay. And um, basically, depending on which side actually wins the gauntlet, they get this item that they can turn into, uh, either, uh, the clans can turn it into, uh, somebody at Old Athen, and Omni can turn it into somebody at Omni Trade, and that allows you to get this buff for, like, the next 16 hours. 
that gives you 10 points to all your stats, 20 points to first aid, 3 points to XP. It's a nice little buff. Yeah, oh yeah, it also gets a bunch of max health and max nano. And if you're neutral, it doesn't matter which side wins, you just go to that, that side's uh, guy and ask for the buff. It's one of the few bonuses you get for playing a neutral in this game. Other than being able to use every garden and uh, in uh, the Shadowlands. <laughs> and being able to wear both the sided shoulder pads and go ha 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 ha. That's about it. Okay. Um, you lose a lot of stuff, like not having token boards, but yeah. I've been a neutral player since the beginning. I was like, I knew nothing about the game when I logged in. So when they asked me if I wanted to be Clan or Omni, I'm like, what's Clan? What's Omni? Then I see the sign that said neutral. Okay, I'm going neutral. And I was in, I think, one of the backyards, just futzing around. And a guy came up. It's like, yeah, um, do you want to join this uh, group? The group at this point was called Omega, which I actually found out later has a lot to do with the Anarchy Online lore. Okay. Um, and I was Omega for the first 20, 30 levels. But that org kind of died on me. And shortly thereafter, I met this man by the name of Nyadich. N-Y-A-D-A-C-H. Mm-hmm. And he asked me if I knew anything. And I'm like, no, I know nothing about it. I haven't even heard from these guys in a while. He's like, well, you want to join my group? We're essentially, we're kind of the uh, the news service for Rubica. We're called the Independent Rubicans. And I'm like, sure. Until I could get my dojo started, fine. <laughs> I was planning at that point to start the whole org, uh, basically a martial artist only org. Yeah, good built, luck with that. Uh, built around a dojo. Martial it, artists are, are pretty good to start out with. I think that's what you advised me to do. Yes, that. martial artists are pretty good because they're good solo characters, and you don't need to spend money on weapons for most of the game. You just gotta worry about, you know, getting good fist damage. They're they're able to handling multiple monsters by themselves. They start flagging a little when you hit the end game uberness, I've noticed. But not that bad really. They're they're a good average all around fighting char- melee character. Okay. Hmm. You have your heals, you have your evades, you have a lot of damage. And as you continue to go through it, you get a lot more speed, too. Yeah, you're fast. And also, I had heard, I had read on forum somewhere that um, that the martial artist was actually, um, it's kind of a good second-class doctor, in, in case you don't have an actual no. healer on your team. No, no. Mm. I don't know who wrote that, but they're, they're not right. Okay. Um, you, you have a lot of good heal, click heals that you can give for yourself. But um, nano skills and AO have two things: attack and recharge. Mm-hmm. Um, attack and recharge also works for weapons as well. But for nano skills, um, it means a couple of things. Uh, attack skill, regardless of how much it is, if you if you uh, take nano C and it as one of the skills you take, that number will slowly go down as to, to the fact that you'll be able to cast it eventually in one second. Mm. Recharge time can never be shortened. And all of the martial artist recharge times are horrible. Yeah, I've, I've noticed I'm that playing on my paid account. The second to last um, martial artist heal right now, flourishing heal, mm-hmm. attack speed, 3.1 seconds, recharge, 9.78 seconds. That means I cast a heal. I have to wait almost 10 seconds before I can cast it again. My team version is uh, just over 7 seconds of recharge. Um, And that's, by the way, the best team one I'll ever have. (laughs) And if you look at that in relation to adventurers and doctors... 
their their big number is always the top one, which means they can get that down to being able to cast like every two to three seconds. Then all they got to worry about is running out of nano, which is, you know, like your MP. Um, that's their only major concern. The other side of that is um, our heal numbers are a lot lower than adventurers or doctors. Uh, Ed, who also plays AO, has an adventurer, uh, looks at my heal numbers and laughs. Mm -hmm. So really, the second, if you want a doctor in the game, the second, or if you don't want to play a doctor in the game, the second best to play for a healer is an adventurer. Okay. If you just want a single thing, you find a metaphysicist and have them put the heal pet on you. Metaphysicists are a pet profession class, and one of their pets does nothing but heal you. Then, only then, do you look for a martial artist. And he'll probably go, no, I suck. <laughs> I can't heal that well. I can punch well, something, yeah. though. For a martial artist, a heal is only um, really something you use in addition to all the perk clicks or your, um, your um, first aid stims, anything to try to get yourself health while fighting things that are actually going past your evades. Uh, Tree of Wisdom. Uh, only if you're low. Yeah, it's Tree of Enlightenment, by the way. Tree of Enlightenment. Yeah, after that you actually then go to uh, Flower of Life, which is a, a higher martial artist attack. You're punching, you heal at the same time. Huzzah! <laughs> and yeah, I actually do have a perk line that um, every time I hit, I technically um, set off a... Uh, a, a short hot kind of nice okay. um speaking of nanos uh randy have you heard that they're getting rid of the nano formulas yeah you mentioned that a couple weeks ago at um econ um i haven't heard uh they're they're not getting rid of the nano formulas they're getting rid of the nano skills right um the i just looked at the um the update news or the the um, announcement is that they're getting rid of nano formulas, which in particular for nano technicians, uh, which they have like over a hundred formulas to look at, um, should cut down on what they need to search uh, through. In where, the, um, where was this posted? Uh, this was posted on the August update uh, under community corner. Okay, um, I'm gonna actually take a look at that right now, if you don't mind. <laughs> That's okay, yeah. I believe Lindy Lou said that it's going to, um, not easier also to reset your, your hot bars. Like, you don't have to spend hours, like, trying to reorganize your hot bars if, if you ever need to do that. Which, if, if you do change computers for this game... If you, if you do change computers for the Wait a minute. Will, will the... name all your bags and your, your hot bars will be blanked Wait, out. Lindelou was the game director. Huh? Lindelou was the was the replacement game director for uh, After Means Left. Yes. So yes. we just lost another? Yeah, that, yes. that's, that's what I was saying. That's why I, that's why I brought up the game directors. because have, Lindelou... have, have they announced who the replacement's going to be? I don't believe so. I, I tried looking through the thread again, and I didn't Okay, see they're it. not removing all nano formulas. They're removing some of them. Oh, uh, okay. They're, they're trying to give, uh, they're, they're trying to get rid of redundant formulas. Okay. Yeah. I thought that's what the basis of it was. Yeah, it was to slim things down so it's a lot more understandable. Okay. Because you know how, like, there's the different Mongo slams for enforcers. Now there's only going to yeah. be one Mongo slam. It just upgrades when you get high enough level. Okay. That. Oh. 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 You're kidding me. Hmm. That's how they're going to do this? Oh. No. 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 I no. Mean, oh, no. No. You know, if they're gonna have it so that it's be so that what you're casting is based on the level you have, that's basically making twinking for nano skills worthless. So, my 75 nano technician who can cast the end game AOE nuke, which can take out Ellie Hex, 
worthless. It'll turn out to be one nuke, and at my level, it could probably not take out a NAS sense heckler. Not good. It means uh, the engineer I've been twinking for the last five years to try to put in a Slayer droid so I could run around the Temple of Three Winds with a Slayer droid mm-hmm. won't be. It'll just be probably at that level um, a junk bot. It means um, Weefle Boy currently in Grid Armor 4. No, actually he's 150. He'll probably still be in Grid Armor 4. Actually, not not you mentioned that. Yeah, that actually isn't a very good idea. No, that's not a good idea. I mean, it's yeah. nice that the, the, it's nice idea to clean up everything and all that, but no, people want to be able to twink into the high level stuff. They don't want to be stuck in the level. Yeah. Yeah. So no more buffing into your buffs. No nope. more buffing into bots. No. I mean buffs. Yeah, buffing yeah. so you can well, learn everything buffs. Everything yes. on your level. Yeah, that's basically going to shut twinking down. Oh, wow. At that point, why don't you also just give us guns that only upgrade when you level? And armor. It's... No, 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 I'm sorry. Bad idea, guys. Maybe there's been a negative reaction to it, and that's maybe why she also quit. Uh, Linda Lou. Maybe there's been a really big negative uh, reaction to that. Maybe that's half another small reason why she left. Because people suddenly realized, oh wait. Yeah. Yeah, I was originally opposed to the uh, new player market too, but I've gotten to, I've gotten used to that. Mm. Yeah, there's no listing on. Um, On who's the uh, next uh, game director? Okay. That slowly worries me. Mm-hmm. I know. That's why I posted on Facebook. I'm like, no, Henry Key Online, no. I mean, I don't play this game that often. I don't have a very deep knowledge of it. But I, di- yeah, I want to see this go. It's just like after City of Heroes, and if AO fa- fails, then what else is next? Are they going to get rid of Lotro? Is it worth putting money into Lotro? Is it worth even playing, putting any time into to gameplay for it, or just even hanging around? Yeah, I'm I'm kind of wondering here. Uh, it's, I'm kind of wondering if they're getting ready to pull the plug on AO. I did remember hearing rumors a few months back that they were going to uh, merge RK1 and RK2. They were still. That's, that was in her updated, actually. I don't know. Um, I think that was a little side update, actually. Posted before she posted the August um, update. Um, and it detailed the whole server merge. It's, they're calling it a server migration because they're taking it off of old technology and putting it on a new server. Mm. Uh, which I, I think they've actually um, merged for um, Age of Conan, too. The Wicca and the set servers are now merged. Okay. So. Oh. So, yeah, actually, I need to check out my mule. Uh, yeah. That's another fun thing about AO was before we actually had an email system in-game, we only got one a couple years ago, mm-hmm. you started these second free accounts to mule your gear over. <laughs> so you could double log. You could still double, and I can actually triple log uh, characters. I think I've quad logged at one point on this computer. My old computer would start lagging horribly if I did more than two. Uh, but yeah, I need to look at my mule. Uh, I would I would have logged him instead of this character instead of making this character. But at the same time, I'm like, you know what? I don't really use him. He's not that interesting. He's yeah. Kind of there. But uh, I need to log him because I think he might have guns I could use on this character. What is your character? I hadn't actually noticed. Soldier. Oh, soldier. No, Matt, you probably don't. Because you rolled a soldier before, and I gave you guns, and then you deleted said soldier. With the gun still in your inventory. 
Oh yes, I remember that. Randy was I was happy. pissed. <laughs> I I thought I passed on some guns to the um to the mule though. I do remember passing on some stuff yeah, so that, that would not all happen. Yeah, but got deleted with your character. I, I deleted. Was... I believe I deleted one gun. I believe it was one gun. Yeah, I was. I was kind of pissed about that because I had pulled all those guns out and. Uh... <laughs> I believe it was only one gun by accident that got deleted. I yeah. Think. Remember, general rule: when you are going to delete or re-roll a character, strip the tune. Anything that's not no I did strip him, but I forgot to give everything to somebody else. I'm occasionally pissed because I'll re-roll a character and realize I left about three to four million credits on him. Ooh. And I'm just like, Gah! Yeah, like, I remember, I remember actually this incident, um, Matt, Randy, I, and Bob, and I think Ed, we were all doing a role play uh, down not, in just Athens. three of us and Bob. And that oh, was okay. just the death of Bob's character. That's mm -hmm. right, yeah. Where we executed him in Old Athens. That was actually kind of fun. Yeah, that was kind of that fun. Was I cool. think it was the last great role-playing we've seen in AO. Mm -hmm. and actually, we got a few people actually kind of watching us, too. It's like, what are those people doing over there? Yep, people were actually watching us. Some people tried breaking up the fun, but... Yeah, you know, that's because there's always trolls. Every MMO has trolls. The big freaking um, protest rally at City Heroes a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. You had people in Atlas Park 33, and then you had some guy spamming um, kin buffs, which causes your emotes to, to fail. Mm. And he had it on auto fire and just sat there in the middle of the crowd and went AFK. He eventually called a GM who, I, who forced him to die. Okay. <laughs> as far as I know, he's still lying there dead. Ha ha. Because he, he, he had deliberately set him up. He like started a task force or something. And apparently, if you're in a task force, you cannot AFK, you cannot AFK log out. Hmm. As long as you're auto-firing something. Okay. And may his corpse remain there until the game shuts down. Thank you. <laughs> we'll yeah. To that next week. Yeah, I also wanted to touch on some of the reactions to that too, and some of them have not always been in positive support. I want to make a long fans. podcast. Yeah, it's going to be a long podcast. Kind of like the podcast if we ever have you talk about um, uh, River. Yeah, on the on the other podcast, yeah. Mm -hmm. I will. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a, anything that gets me into a foaming mouth rant. Be expected to take 45 minutes at least on said foaming mouth rant. So yes, next week we'll plan to start Randy up at about, oh, say five minutes in and go. <laughs> that will be the entire podcast is me foaming at the mouth. <laughs> foaming at the mouth, raging. <laughs> Until one of you actually has to come over here and tranquilize me <laughs> to end the podcast. Actually, we'll have to probably call Sarah and get, hand her and uh, tell her to bring the tranquilizer darts. Or or, or I might try a Vulcan Shut down to Randy again, Sarah. You gotta come over. <laughs> Sarah, you got Sarah. You gotta get over by Randy's. Why? He's falling at the mouth. You need someone needs to stop him. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, death, death, death. I think we finally stopped him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so what's where we going to mention about um anarchy online? I know I have a friend who wants to play a bureaucrat, mostly because you can make coffee to buff people. Oh yeah. I have a bureaucrat. His name is Bill Lumber. <laughs> Anybody here remember Office Space? Yeah. I do. I'm gonna have to have you come in on Saturday. <laughs> Great. Um, it's one of the only names I actually have for a character that's a joke on my main account. Because I wanted to roll a crat because Ed rolled a crat and was really enjoying it. And I'm just like, sounds fun. I'd had a fruit crat before. I'd never gotten her above level 10 because she was rolled as a complete and total joke. Mm. Um, it was back when my org was still more, a lot more active than it is today, and we were just cracking jokes. Um, 
in the uh, in our chat channel, and somebody starts making blonde bureaucrat jokes. <laughs> not the gr- not not the not the most tasteful thing in the world, but I eventually responded, "Don't make me! You'll make me roll a blonde crat." So I did. I rolled a blonde crat named Bimbo Crat. <laughs> She went Omni for the sole purpose of the fact that she was supposed to go neutral and got confused. <laughs> <laughs> She's level 10, she sits on my third my, my, my third account, my second Throob account, and her entire job now these days is, oh, I'm rolling a new character, they'll need a med suit. Go get me a med suit. Has some yeah. use. Yeah, my first group account, aka my second account, is now what I refer to as my backyarder account. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a series of tunes I have created and leveled that are the sole purpose are are to eventually sit in one of the backyards, which is originally the old starting areas, but they're kind of like hangouts now. And um, I go into a backyard whenever I take a tune off the line, which is I'm going in for adding higher level implants, putting on new armor, etc. That's going to take me um, a great deal of time and probably a lot of reperks to do. So that means for the next few days I'm going to be completely useless in combat. Um, but so basically I have my, my body shop in Borealis Backyard 5. I just have this whole account of tunes that have all the buffs I usually need. I've got a dock for casting uh, treatment buffs. I've got uh, an enforcer for casting stat buffs. I've got um, a trader for wrangles. A, a wrangle is a, a skill buff, a general skill buff that lasts about two minutes. Its entire purpose is to equip stuff, I swear. Um, they're non-paid. They're just the best you can do with a, with a free account. And that's, I've actually enjoyed creating these characters. Mm -hmm. They're all named, you know, Backyard Doc, Backyard Trade, Backyard Info. I remember us helping to level your Backyard Doc. Yep. A couple times, yes. Yeah, well, you still would if you ever uh, all got yourselves to 100. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because, yeah, that's what he, that's what he's there for. He, uh... I think I have one in the 80s. You have one in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm in both, the 90s. You both have guys in the 90s. Yeah, I believe I am what... I am level 96 right now. What the heck is this? My dual score, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, those that you will notice that I have a second name in front of my main name. Mm-hmm. That is my PvP title. Okay. That is, I am uh, rank three for solo PvP kills. Wow. Yeah, Nam was fairly awesome at level 200 for the, like, year and a half I left him at level 200. I think I can remember him being at 150 when you guys went off to hunt Trash King. Yeah. Yeah, I had, originally he was my first uh, Twink Tune for Sector 10, but then I uh, uh, got Alona, my uh, metaphysicist, up to that level, who did a lot better in Sector 10. Um, and so Nam went up the line for Sector 7 and became level 200, and I left him there for quite a while. Alona is now taking Nam's place as my Sector 7 Twink, after uh, Weefle Boy, my fixer, became my Sector 10 Twink. About four months to five months after Weefle Boy became my Sector 10 Twink, they redesigned Sector 10 and made it absolutely worthless. Oh yes, they, um, wasn't it Sector 10? There was, an, there was a few items that you could take over to an NPC uh, that was waiting for you. And you can exchange the, the NPC for, what, four million credits? Each, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I could I could make twenty to fifty million in a day. I could make wow. fifty million in four hours work, to be honest. Jeez. And then they, they took all of that out. They took out those I- or those items they're they're worthless now. You can't exchange no, them. No, no, they don't drop. Okay. They they don't drop. They drop in higher level sector instances, but only from bosses. 
Oh, wow. So, they're rare. But, um... It still it annoys the heck out of me that they... I wish they would have just turned it into, like, a daily mission. So you could do that, and you could get one every 24 hours. And just the amount of cash you got depend, depended on which item you brought, and one item would drop in one sector instance. That would have made a lot more sense to me, and they didn't do it like that. Instead, they hit the entire thing with a giant sledgehammer, which, as I said, annoyed me. And they said they were going to change it and make it better, and they never did. So I'm kind of, I'm still kind of pissed at them about that. Um, another thing they took out was that they also dropped these things uh, called uh, hacker ice sources. And the thing about the hacker ice sources is they could be easily trade skilled into um, uh, intrusion countermeasure electronics, which is used for um, alien invasion city raids it automatically puts the power of your city controller up to 100% which is about where you want it when you start a raid mm -hmm. and um, now that uh, those have uh, no longer drop in sector 10 um, they only drop in the higher level instances and it's higher to get an it's it's harder to get enough uh, ice to start a raid it's so the price of ice and CRUs have gone through the roof because of that okay. and that like I said annoys me except for the fact that I still have about five bags full and thus could make probably about a billion on the market with the rate that they're going up Wow. but that would mean I could no longer do city raids myself so we tit for tat, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Do you think do you think some of these changes are worth it? Do you think they're building up to anything or do you think they're they are No, I think that I think that we've got so many people whining about how it was so easy to make money in sector ten and how that unbalanced the game that they just turned and they hit it with a gigantic nerf bat. Okay. They even mentioned the fact that, that that when they did it to Sector 10, that was not planned to happen on that patch. Because they did it with, I think, the Halloween patch last year. Okay. And, yeah, that was just me going, no. No. Speaking of that, they actually have done something interesting this year. They actually put the uh, Halloween and Christmas items in the database. Um months in advance mm -hmm. so that instead of having to wait for a patch for going Halloween they could just flip a toggle and go hey look it's Halloween guys the Uncle Pumpkin heads are out mm, awesome I, I think I remember reading that in the update so yeah man, she said that it was pretty hard on some of the devs well it I is but that meant that they had to pretty much pat they had pretty much had to de design the Halloween and Christmas items simultaneously mm-hmm um, it's it was harder for the devs up front, and then easier for them later on. I still remember like there were Christmas presents around. There's Chris. There's always Christmas presents. I've got bags full of Christmas presents. <laughs> well, I remember one being on top of. A roof in, uh, a oh yeah, but that was a that was a leftover. Uh, somebody forgot to remove it from one of the patches. Okay. I wonder if it's still there. It might be. Be like the. Per Perpetually rolling roller rat on New Island. Mm. Oh no, 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 no. Now you have to tell the story about the first time you encountered roller rats, Aaron. Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh, the balls of fury that that was. <laughs> oh, no, um, no, no, your reaction was great. Your reaction was great. Oh, they're oh, so cute. Look at No, no, oh no, that was scorpoids. Matt oh, ran off to this, try to, there to, are no to uh, try to attack a scorpoid. This this was this was on New Island, Aaron. It was just the fact that you did it later with the scorpoids. Oh, okay. You you were, oh, they were so cute. cute. You saw these roller rats out in the water. Oh yes. Swam out to the roller rat so you could look at it, and then it started eating your face. Yes. <laughs> 
they were they were the bright red roller reds too so i was like they were just walking on top of the water i'm like well wow, how did those things get out onto the water and you're like well someone yeah. probably just pushed yeah. them off the platform or something like that and it fell off into the ocean in front of you <laughs> and so like i ran up there thinking that they couldn't attack or anything and here the thing sinks to the bottom of, of the ocean and is, is, sh is still able to shoot and attack me underneath the water and i'm like and of course i can't dive underwater anything. Hmm? and you swimming can't attack or anything so it's like ah, ah get it off get it off yeah, see, i'm sitting here laughing my dive, ass off can't dive. <laughs> and aaron died in the water yeah I remember that I think that, that was your now. first AO death. <laughs> first of many, many, many. Actually, yes, I just see I saw those red uh, roller rats again today, too, while I was out there. <laughs> like, wandering around, wandering around, leveling, leveling. Looking around for a minute while I'm thinking about what I'm going to do next. Oh, look, red roller rats and out in the water. Someone trailed them out there again. <laughs> I bet you they died in the water, too. Yeah, I, um, you spend a lot of your time running away from stuff in this game, too. I spent a lot of my time in this game lost. Uh-huh. <laughs> I used to, my login for, um, IR, you can actually have the bot have a login message for you, was pretty much, Where the hell am I now? Hmm. Matt, did uh, you tell Randy about the time when we, when I kind of shifted between the game space? When it shifted to begin between the game space. Mm-hmm. Remember, I was flying in my own. And we were trying to get to this one section where cyborgs were at, where we were trying to hunt up the cy cyborgs in order to earn XP, in order to earn, like, cyborg parts for that one daily mission. Oh, yeah, like, we were trying to do, I yeah, we were trying to go, go hunting for the cyborgs. We are going to go get the cyborg parts, which they then use for a lower... Another mission further on, and so we're 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 going out there to hunt stuff. I I I zoom out there with my jetpack. Uh, Aaron's here, Yom. We head outside, and somehow I lost Aaron completely. I don't know we're, what we the hell actually, happened. We exited the Yom, or we ex we exited the Wampas in tier because we couldn't we couldn't go through the um the Temple of Three Winds anymore. We were too high level to access that gateway. Um, we were, I think, in our 80s ago by then. So we were hovering over tier, and we were being attacked by some of the tier guards because we didn't hover high enough. So I was like, screw this, I'm going to hover, I'm going to go as as I can to get away from these things. Um, then I proceeded to just kind of follow the map out to where the cyborgs are. And when I zoomed, when I kind of, I kind of went down to the, um, to the ground level a little bit more, oh, I was out of, out of harm's way. And I noticed there aren't any trees or anything. There's no trees. Uh, the buildings from Tier, I can still see. Okay. But it's just this you, brown and then patches of brown caught. and patches of green. You zone caught. It means you, z you tried to zone and the zoning server went, no. <laughs> so what you wound up in is a phantom echo. Um, you are trapped that, between spaces, Aaron. Yeah, yeah. It technically is. It technically overlays the next zone, mm -hmm. but it has just enough detail so that when you're looking at it, it looks like the horizon for the next zone. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you are still probably on the tier map. Yeah, because like you were I just, tried just crossing at, the um the zone border. Yeah, yeah. that's happened to me a few times. I, I actually hit it down in Galway. Ball. What? I hit an invisible wall and I couldn't go any further. That's like, where are you? Why aren't you, you know, and it, on the map for, on the world map, it looked like I was still moving. Only I, I had hit a wall and on the map, my little dot was still moving. And it was just really weird. Bizarre. I'm like, Matt, I'll, I'll tell you exactly where I am. And Matt, Matt was like, I flew oh, right there and I'm like, map. you're not here, Aaron. You do not exist here. Yeah, where yeah, are you? If that you? happens to you guys again, go back to the zone border. You last cry. I, I, I think I did finally direct her to go back to the zone and try again, and it did work the second time. So it's like okay. Yeah, it's, it's just part of the old, um, old version of this ending. 
is the fact that the zone border kind of goes, hey, what? And occasionally the zone border, the zone server, the zoning server, hiccups. And you, or it sometimes happens on specific areas. And yes, when you're high in your yalm, usually that's where you see it. <laughs> but there's this place between Galway, there's this bridge between Galway County and Galway Shire, um, which is way down in Omniland. Um, that if you cross anywhere but directly across the middle of the bridge, that you'll get a zoning server hiccup. That bug has been there since launch. Wow. They can't fix it without redoing bulk maps. So it'll be fixed with the new engine. Wah, 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 wah. Uh, and I've seen this happen when I was um, going from Newland City into Newland. Yes, it's um, I would zone through the, um, I would be in my arm again and go through the where the doorways are, but then it would be like, well, you're in an unoccupied place or something like that. And I'd look around and sure wouldn't be anything there. Yeah, yeah, it generally also happens with Yalms. Mm -hmm. There's a few other bugs with Yalms too, but. Yalms are the air vehicle of the game for those of you that don't play this. <laughs> it's the original air vehicle for this game. They've since added a few others that do not work uh, the same way Yalms do and therefore don't have all the bugs. But Yalms are the original silver, cool looking vehicles. <laughs> I, when I first play, I, I had a friend of mine drive up in a Yalm and I'm just like, that's awesome! I want one. Two weeks later, I found one in a chest because there was a bug at that time that yawned for chest loot. Yeah, that'd be so cool. Oh my god, I found a new car! You found it? <laughs> yeah, I, I had hover, hover. like four or five vehicles that entire week. That was great. The week of the week of yawn chest loot, man. I, I I think I wound up with a forty-three yawn. I still have it. <laughs> Oh, By yeah. the way, have any of you that actually use air vehicles in this game noticed that your airspeed is slower than it used to be? Hmm. I haven't been flying around a lot lately. I actually haven't been to ADO in quite a while. Like... Something I noticed, I was um, on my metaphysicist who doesn't use a YOM. They have a buff called Quantum Wings that allows them to fly. And I was uh, following somebody who was 20 levels higher than me and thus had a much faster run speed in a face front vehicle. It's one of the later vehicles. That's supposed to give them further buffs to their run speed. I noticed we were going at the exact same speed. So I'm wondering if they've actually now said fly speed is one speed. So all of those buffs they have on vehicles and stuff don't matter anymore. Hmm. Don't know, I haven't heard about it. Yeah, it's just something I noticed. I don't know if it was just, you know, an instance or something. It just kind of hit me as odd. Hmm. Do you think this... Do you think um, Anarchy Online is becoming a little bit too simplified? At times, Anarchy Online is the most complex MMO out there. Screw what anyone else says. You have 220 levels. Um, each level gives you... Uh, an amount of improvement points which you spend to increase base abilities and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different tabs worth of skills. Let's see. Eight. Uh, Eighteen. Twenty-one. Crap. Um, two, three, three, four, five. 37 different skills that you could improve and those skill numbers can eventually hit over 2,000 You could have made an over 9,000 joke there, but yeah. <laughs> That's why I snickered slightly. Yeah. 
Your stats themselves can break a thousand. I'm currently wearing some armor that requires 1,045 in one stat. Armor. Special Edition OFAB Martial Artist Helmet, quality level 300. Must have strength from 900 and agility from 1,045. The, the helmet alone gives me 1,600 to all ACs, 50 at all offense, 25 stamina, and 500 max health. It's a very nice piece of armor. Mm -hmm. All of the rest of my armor will be that much cooler once I get it all penultimate. And then I'm going to be one heck of a butt kicker. It takes a lot of work to get that armor on, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. No, it's got, it's, a lot of people are just like, you know, oh, well, we'll go raiding and we'll, you know, gather up the best armor we can find out of the raid. And then you'll just, you know, you'll throw it on and we'll all be good and everything. Um, Anarchy Online, you can't do that. You, you, you may have the greatest armor in the world, but you've got to find a way to put it on. You've got to put it on. You've got to have... Um, a lot of the best armor has to be trade skill. Oh. The best armor in the game currently is combined alien armor. Okay. Step one of which is you either have to farm or spend a crap load of money to buy um, a lead viral box. These drop off the alien generals in city raids at nowhere near a high enough percentage. I would have to say the percentage is somewhere around 1%. Um, then you'll need one of those for every piece of armor you wish to make. Standard armor, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven slots. Not including your back, your neck, your shoulders, your wrists, your fingers. That's all different stuff. But, so you'll need seven bots. You'll need seven other pieces that drop more commonly off that general. You will need uh, biomaterial, which drops randomly throughout the raid, in the quality level you need it. The quality level of that biomaterial is going to be the quality level of the armor that gets made. So if you want to make quality level 300 armor, you need quality level 300 biomaterial. And then you need to buy a bunch of stuff from this store in Meet Me Dare called Uncle Bazitz. Mm -hmm. And then you have to go through this arduous process of prepping it, Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> you have to go through this arduous process of prepping it, um, preparing each piece, combining the pieces in the right order, and um, that looks like a med suit, newbie. Um, <laughs> and from Storm, too. I actually know those guys. Um, but then you have to prepare all these pieces, and eventually you get one piece of whatever alien armor you just wanted. Then you have to do it again with a, uh... And we have a troll. <laughs> and then you have to do it again with another set. And then you have to combine those two sets together, again in the right order, He's probably just curious as to why we are here. Yeah, and nope. he's clicking Bob. Yeah, he's clicking on Bob Marley. Um, you have to then combine it again to make uh, the combined armor. So, really, a full set of combined armor could easily run a character a billion and a half in credits. I think I actually have some of those nanobots on my paid account. From I remember you and Bob showing me a um, a raid on the independent Rubicon um, building, and um, that's what they dropped. They Is dropped that one, or it's it's one of the um, alien um, alien attacks on another orb city that I saw, like the first they, one. That the I viral saw. bots would not have been left behind. If you're thinking of like powdered viral bots or something like that, no, that's something else. Mm, okay. 
the, 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 what I'm, the ones I'm talking about are like arithmetic, arithmetic lead viral bots. Oh, okay. And there's also unformatted lead viral bots, and uh, there's another one that's also completely another replace. This might be the unformatted lead viral bots or something. But yeah, there's there's a whole process you have to go through on those viral bots to get them to build the armor, and then you've got to convert combine two sets of armor to merge into combined armor. So it's very expensive process because um, making just the base set of armor can sometimes cost you between four to seven hundred million in credits to buy all the pieces, mm. or many 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 weeks worth of raiding. It is horrific, um, the drop rate on that. And combined is kind of the ultimate Twinker's armor, too. Um, just terrible uh, drop rate. People tend to go for the OFAB armor, which is I'm u- which I'm using, which you buy with victory points, which you earn in either PvP or doing a uh, daily mission. Okay. Mm. I earned a lot of mine in PvP until the daily missions for victory points came in, and then I just went through. Of course, you can also spend money in the shop to purchase victory points, making OFAT armor kind of a pay-to-win. Ugh. Yeah, it, it hurts Randy to say that. Pay-to-win in, in Anarchy Online. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the things I do not like about their store, as I'm not a big pay-to-win person. No, that's and not how games, games are supposed I'm to go. Seeing, and a lot of games I'm actually playing are kind of pay to win these days. Star Trek Online, um, all the best endgame ships are bought through the stores. Um, Uncharted Waters Online, the same. All the best endgame ships are purchased through the stores. Um, uh, City of Heroes, the more powerful power sets were purchased through the stores. I got around that one because I was a veteran. I would get 400 points every month, and I'd just spend those to purchase power sets. But it's still kind of pay to win. At least with Star Trek Online and Champions Online, you have other ways of getting points, even though it will take you months and months and months to do it. And you can still technically grind to win. Sounds almost like um, Matt with his um, Dungeons and Dragons online trying to get enough points to open up the drow. Yeah, I've been. My sketch drow! Considering I'm a D&D player from way back, I've been tempted. I know, I have a friend that plays it that's not Matt. Uh, Tear. Mm. Uh, Tear plays D&D? He plays DDO a lot. Um. Uh, when he's not on City of Heroes or these days Champions Online, he's on uh, DDO, so there's I, that. I have fun here and there. Usually the best people to play with uh, I've uh, met recently is uh, Andrew. Mm. Um, a guy I know from Britain through my uh, Skype D&D game. But um, he's the one that kind of went go play DDO. I'm like, I would kind of have to tempt it. I think I yeah, tried I've to play it, and that's what killed my computer. I to play D&D, but one. then again, you live at the ass end of nowhere. Hmm? I said, I, I had never considered Skype, to, uh, using Skype to play D&D, but then again, you live in the ass end of nowhere. Yes. And because of this, I have now played with people as far away as Australia and Britain. I often talk to people in Australia. I don't play D&D with them. <laughs> we should get DS to uh, join in on Anarchy Online. Of course, if I've they are... I've been trying to convince DS to join Anarchy Online for three years now. He has said no. We I think... see him in the secret world. Mm-hmm. But... Um, he's by the way, DS is a friend of mine from Australia. He actually listens to this. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hello, DS. And um, no, we've, he's been a hardcore City of Heroes player um, since I've met him. He's he played Star Trek Online for like a month, but didn't actually bother to go back. He's playing a little bit of Champions Online now because of the shutdown, but that's next week. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but he hasn't branched out that much. He does that, and he does Facebook games. Uh, Facebook games. I can only stand so much Facebook games, and even I'm starting to get sick and tired of the ones I'm playing right now. To be I honest. play Angry Birds, and that's about it. I play SimCity Social. That's Sims... one of the ones he plays. Yeah, I've got SimCity. I've got Marvel Ultimate. Uh, uh, not Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Uh, Marvel uh, Avengers. Mm. And um... Avengers Alliance. Avengers Alliance or something like that. It, it's it's Marvel I've Avengers. I've seen the ads for it. Um. And I also play Dungeon Overlord, which is kind of like Dungeon Keeper, kind of. Like I said, I, I, I just play Angry Birds, and that's only when I need to vent. Mm-hmm. There's nothing like a stress breaker of, of chucking pissed off birds at a bunch of pigs. <laughs> Connor O'Brien did it. Um... But yeah, so endgame armor is usually expensive in this. Uh, they're coming out with something new called Delta, and I'm trembling in fear for that. Really? But, yeah, I, I'm suspecting it might be combined combined. Oh, wow. <laughs> if that's the case, the lead viral bots, are, the prices are obscene now, and they're going to be even more obscene in the future. <laughs> well, the... the um... The economy for Anarchy Island has been kind of broken for a while, hasn't it? Like, since launch? Yeah. And actually, speaking of launch, didn't it, what exactly happened with Anarchy Island's launch that needed one of the most... Infamous launches in the history of MMOs? The exactly. The weren't fully stable. So, they either that or they did not anticipate the amount of people trying to use Anarchy Online in their first month. But, so, people would get on and the servers would just lag and crash. Lag and crash, lag and crash constantly. You couldn't do anything. It was absolutely mind-numbingly horrible. I wasn't even on yet, but I heard about it from people that were. You would zone and crash. You would just be sitting there and crash. You would get in a team. You would fight something and crash. It was just terrible. And some of the in-game physics hadn't been ha- hammered down yet. Certain things like evades were broken. Those were still broken when I started. Um, it was just, just um, teeth pulling. So anybody that survived the first month, they gave out this little item called the Pioneer Backpack, <laughs> which had a bunch of, which gave you a bunch of stats. It made it a lot. It made it fun to twink. Mm. I missed the Pioneer backpack by about a month and a half. Oh, jeez. Yeah, and of course they've never actually offered them again in ten years. I kind of hope they'll put them at the store, because it's been ten years, guys. Mm. I'd pay money for one. Twinkie! Twinkie backpacks. Yeah. (sighs) Oh... Instead, I look at a lot of the uh, the stuff that's in the store, and it's like, it's either stuff that should not be in the store, or... Actually, no. I originally didn't like the concept of experience stims, but after seeing how they worked in um, City of Heroes, I'm actually fine with them. Okay. Wow, I have 2,300 Funcom points. Wow. I spent all of mine on the secret world buying clothes that yeah that wear. might have been what happened is I might have spent actually no these I think were put in game here so I actually have money it might have just come because my I think my uh, annual account got re-upped hmm. um so I get a crap load of fun count points for updating my uh that I'll have to log into the secret world and see if I have them over there too. You might, because I know that's pretty much how I got all of mine for the secret world to begin with. I thought they they seem to be the same numbers. Not enough for the homestead pack. I need another nine hundred points for the homestead pack, hmm. which uh, is um, 
would be nice. Homestead pack is something in the store. 33,200 Funcom points. You get a portable bank terminal permanently. Mm-hmm. Portable global market search permanent. Hmm. Gold luxury apartment, which I already have and I don't need another one, but that's fine. And instant grid conversion beacon, which basically you're in the grid. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's nice. Who needs to find it's a terminal? Super fast I am there. Yeah, I'm actually gonna. I actually should take a look to figure out how much those would cost individual. Um, the portable bank by itself is five thousand four hundred points. Mm. The portable GMS is five thousand four hundred points. So to have a pack like that, where you get both of those for three thousand two hundred points. Plus 20 grid conversions? Yeah. That is good. Yeah. I may have to get that just to get those. Because that's also account wide. So, all of my tunes on this account would have those. So, yeah, that's that's nice. Something I'm saving up for. As long as the game stays on. So we mostly talked about Anarchy Online at, on this one. Mm-hmm. That's... Because mm-hmm. that's the game we were on. Mm-hmm. Um, your guys' thoughts on it? I, I still enjoy popping in on this game every now and then. It's not main. Like, City of Heroes, I would consider my main game. That's... That seems to be one that I spend the most time on. And we'll rant about that one next week. Yes, exactly. I, I don't. Um, I don't mind this game either. I, I did not like it very much the first time I played it because there was a lot of bugs that just drove me nuts. Well, you also, I think, started during a bad time because they had just moved servers. Oh, that would explain a lot of it then. Oh yes. Yeah. The- they combined the German server with... No, uh... no, that wasn't it. They switched ISPs. Oh, okay. And the, the new ISP couldn't handle the load, so they wound up switching again. Mm. So yeah, there was, was like a lot of you, bugs that just drove it, me away from this game. At the point first. you were just doing stuff, and then it would just lag for like 30 minutes. Mm. I didn't even suffer lag. I, it just wouldn't work. Like, there was like really bad bugs that just broke the game for me. It's just after a while, I'm like... Yeah, unless you want to hear me raging all the time, I think it's time to hang up the hat on this for a little while. Let's see what happens later. All MMOs have bugs, because all MMOs are under development all the time. Yes, but so I don't recall new, many... They break them. I don't recall many games on a regular basis have bugs that cause you to not be able to finish a quest. Not very often. There are some... It happens once in a blue moon on some games, but it's not something that happens very often, and... I think it happened to me on AO like two or three times in a row. Uh, at that point, so it's just yeah, like yeah. Let no. me let. Uh, if we ever actually do one of these for the Secret World, I have stories about launch. <laughs> oh yes. Hopefully, Matt will be able to get into the Secret World. Maybe we could do it on like a free-to-play weekend or something. Yeah, right. Do it on a free weekend or something. or something. Or maybe one of us can pony up fifteen bucks so he can have a month. Something. Don't you have to pay for the game? Though? Oh, that's it's like right. That's right. You gotta pay fifty bucks for the game and then fifteen dollars. Or actually, you pay fifty bucks for the game. It comes with a free pump. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm not gonna ask fifty bucks out, you guys. We'll we'll try and do it on a free weekend or something. We'll we'll pool our resources, Matt. Randy will live off of ramen for another year or so. Hey, I already did that for a month when I bought my Lifer account for Secret World. Oh, yeah. I, lived on, I lived on nothing but rice for two weeks because I, I miscalculated the amount I had in my account. I thought I could have had enough for that, and I had enough for... Uh, I hope that was flavored rice. Um, I, I thought I had enough for the Secret World update, enough to buy myself groceries for the month, and it turned out uh, something else had cleared through my account, and I had just enough for the Secret World. But I never have to pay for the Secret World again, and I can always log on and play it, so I'm happy about that. Mm-hmm. If I could find a way to do it, I'd also wind up having a Lifer account on Champions Online and Star Trek Online. 
I thought Star Trek Online offered a lifer account, but it was they a... They both offered lifer accounts, but they're $100 more than the Secret World account was. It's like th $400 for one? $300. $300. 300. Yeah, 400 at launch, they dropped it to 3 when they uh, okay. play. But there's enough perks for being paid players on those that it's uh, it's worth it for me to pay for them as I am now. But I would rather not have to pay on a monthly basis. So yes, I would pay it. I would pay two to three hundred bucks, and then never have to pay again. Uh, every now and then, for like anniversaries and stuff, they offer um, lifer accounts for Anarchy Online, and I would snow. I would so snap up one if one became available. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I could actually do a life account on one of those games for almost in almost like eight weeks, eight, eight months. Blah. But then I have to try and not spend any money at all anywhere for eight months, and that's kind of impossible with conventions. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm so yeah. Yeah. Well, I think one thing. Well, the, what a few things that keep me away from AL are just the complexity that I don't have time to investigate into. Like, this game, I, I worked with a guy who played this game, and um, he was also earning a master's degree, and he, uh, one day he took a step back and, and looked at the amount of time that he was putting into learning how to play Anarchy Online, and the amount that he was putting into his master's degree. And it turned out that he was he was spending exactly the same amount of time, so it's, it was like he was earning two master's degrees. <laughs> So it, that's when he decided he had to quit. I will playing stop the playing this game for months at a time. Um, and then somebody I know will start playing it again, and he will go, um, Hey, Ron, uh, can you help me twink into this? And it's like betting Freddy. Twink, to twink, 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 twink. And already my brain starts going through numbers and calculations. Um, I have whole spreadsheets I build just to twink characters in this game. Mm -hmm. And it is like a, it is like an addiction of uh, being able to find those magic numbers of what items you can put on so you can put on this gear or what implants, what quality implants you can put on and what items you need to put on those quality implants to put on this item so you can switch into other implants and it is yeah. very it is a very complex game. You don't need to get into all the complex complexities just to have fun. Mm -hmm. But when you do, and when you take the time, it's like a whole different world. I do love stealing furniture in this game. Yes, you do. Very awkward habit of yours. They also rumored that they're taking out the... Uh, the uh, When they brought in the alien invasion, they put uh, org cities on the various zone maps that you could buy the plot and build a city. They're talking about removing those and turning them all into instance zones. So I had to run through our orc city and remove all the furniture from there. So my apartments at this point are just warehouses for orc bank for or for orc city furniture. <laughs> yeah, for those who don't know, there is a quest in this game where you can essentially dupe a person into giving you their furniture, their husband's fine furniture, no less. This is a quest I've actually never done in this game. That's the thing. There is so much little itty-bitty things that you can do in this game that it'll take you years to figure out how to do it all. You can technically get a character from 1 to 220 in a few months. Even as a first character, if you, if you ask the right people and, and do this, they can get you up there fast. But if you... I have played this game on and off since 2002, so 10 years now. I have not had a 220 yet because I like to take time, run around, stop at certain levels, and just explore and enjoy myself. And really, you know, it depends on what kind of MMO player there. Are you there to win the game, or are you there to have fun? I'm here to have fun. And that's I, the, yeah. I think that's pretty much the best place to end it. <laughs> mm hmm Exactly. Well, for next week, everybody, we will be uh, talking about uh, we will be talking about City of Heroes and the rather unfortunate events surrounding that. Uh, thank you all for tuning in once 
once again, we have been so, here uh, with uh, Matt, Matt Winchell. Get, uh, in Pocket D then, I take it? Oh, uh, yes, we will be meeting up in Pocket D on, um, uh, what was the server? Virtue server. Virtue server, server Pocket D. Um, I think we'll probably meet on blue side. Um, it doesn't matter. Pocket D is a neutral territory. Yeah. I'll bring we'll, we'll find each other. We'll find each other and we'll have we'll find a decent place to sit and sit and vent about all the Away from the ERPers, please. From the what? <laughs> the 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 um dark side of 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 social MMOs. Oh erotic role players. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, hope to see you in about a week. Hopefully this will be a weekly thing, uh, if not maybe bi-weekly or at least one month. Um, tune in next time to Lounge Leaks when we will be in Pocket D, uh, Virtue Server, uh, City of Heroes. Uh, okay, everybody have a good night. Night. Goodbye. May God bless.